Hello everyone and welcome to Creativity Unleashed. In this video we are diving into the subject of bar choice trusses. Um, there is definitely a lot of designs out there. There are things that are optimized by engineers and they may be the strongest um, bar choice. But when it comes to real life, you have to consider the time it takes to make it and then the material cost involved. And so there's always a trade-off between finding something that's a good balance and a good compromise. So these bar joists right here are 10 foot, meant to um, span a 10 foot span on center and um, they're made out of one by two galvanized tubing with a 1.6 millimeter wall thickness. Um, the bottom piece is a 3 8 round bar and then all of the inner W's are quarter inch. They weigh um, 16 and a half pounds and we are just about to conduct a test to see how much weight they can carry before they fail. Um, so we have two of them together here and we'll have some boards and we're bringing a water tank to um, figure out how strong they are. Around 750 for sight. So this failure, in my opinion, occurred because of the bars under compression buckled. If you look very carefully, you'll see them start to bend and buckle. The ones under tension were doing just fine. And so the next um, set of trusses, bar joists, I decided to add a vertical bar, the same quarter inch bar. Every other one only adds maybe a pound and a half to the weight of the bar joist, but adds a whole lot of strength to support the bars that are under compression for us. So I'd love to hear what your theory is of what failed. I'm not an engineer, but I do enjoy the process of testing and making bar joists and seeing how strong I can make them and also just how simple I can make them because, of course, I could make much stronger, complicated shapes, but I was just trying to make something very simple, easy, lightweight. Um, so now we actually have the metal pretty bent there. This side was all of these bars were bent so there's a little bit more flex in the rods and this bar joist was all um, cut and welded so they're slightly straighter. I'm assuming that would be only a small weight difference that they take before they give out. But. So the steel cost for each one of these bar joists is right at $10 for me. And the paint was another about $3, so $13. And with the vertical bars that I ended up adding, they can carry right at about 1,000 pounds each. And I'm usually putting them somewhere around two foot centers, depending the live load and dead load and all of that that I need to have on the floor. Um, so they worked out extremely well for me. Um, they are very labor intensive, which we'll go into more details on that, but it is a very fun learning experience. Slamming them with the four pound sledgehammer and it wouldn't bust them up. I was like, my, I'm not going to get in a fight with a cow, I'll tell you that much. That was your conclusion. <laughs> yeah, they're a record hardness. And it made me wonder how I might be able to um, re- um, use them like cement because I have heard you can take like bones and turn them into like a uh, mortar somehow somehow yes but the dogs have been snitching them and after they snitched some of the bones they had this really mischievous look on their face like oh no he sees <laughs> but I was like they're cleaning them up for me because these are so the bending we were doing in the previous clip, we ended up dropping that because it took much longer to assemble the bar joist because the W's 
were a little bit of a wrestle to get them in place and they always wanted to move around. So we found just shearing them here with this manual bar shear worked pretty quickly and we were able to do the several thousand bars that we ended up needing pretty quick. And what's nice is you don't make all the dust and all the noise and sparks and stuff from cutting a lot of the other methods and it's pretty quick to do. Here you can see on my fixed curing welding table that I have um, a few pieces clamped down. I have a big C channel here and then some spacers. These are three quarters by inch and a half tubing. I'm um, gonna have my spacing set. I believe it's six and a half inches right now. Three eighths round bar on the bottom and around the, the ring here, the edge. And then we're using quarter inch bar as the webbing and then every other one um, based on where the, the loading and all is, is going down we're putting the bar a quarter inch bar straight up and down and of course we're using quite a few clamps to keep everything where it goes and then we're mig welding it in place and then flipping it over and welding the other side in the upright position it's a little easier and I'm using 030, you'd probably be better use 035, but I happen to have 030 in the machine. Running at 200 inches a minute and 26 volts. So let's go over to fabrication side of things. I was able to get the assembly and welding down to around 17 minutes per bar joist. Um, the cutting to get all the bars cut would take probably another several minutes per bar joist. So definitely not terrible but it depends what you have to pay or what you think your time is worth um, the main complaint i have would be the painting i ended up doing a three coat system and because of how the bars are you end up having to paint them from four different angles and directions to be able to get paint on all the sides and so that took quite a long time to actually do all the paint work so if you could send these to be hot dip galvanized, that would probably be amazing. They could just dip them. Also potentially you could make like a trough and fill it with paint and just dip the bar joist into it. And that could save a whole lot of time. I now kind of look back and wish I would have done that simply because of the amount of time it took to paint. Um, what is a good replacement for these that you're gonna commonly find in the industry is pretty much just a thin gauge galvanized C channel um, thing. Those are used often for floor joists or for purlins on large warehouses and things like that. And those are done in roll forming machines. Um, but in my case, they were quite a bit more expensive and the installation is a lot harder um, to install them in my situation because I wanted them to carry on top of the beams and not on the sides. And so to attach a channel to the side of a beam, you can do that by welding or you could have a welded flange where it bolts on. But all of those connections require more effort and work. And these are very easy to assemble because you can just set them right on top and then either fix them with screws or weld them into position. So now that we have quite a pile of them building up, it's on to the painting, and we ended up trying several methods, but what I ended up sticking with is I sprayed a gray industrial paint first, and then another white industrial paint, and then another gray industrial paint, and with that, I was able to make sure that I was getting an even coat um, between each coat and that I wasn't missing any spots. There are definitely a lot of these to do. And of course, one of the dangers of a bar joist like this is since there's less material like on a bar, if you were to miss a spot and it was to rust out and break, um, you could definitely have a, a bar joist fail pretty easily um, through that method. Um, and so the main maintenance on these is also going to be a little more difficult because once they're installed to actually paint all the way around each bar, can be a little bit more difficult. So that's partly one of the reasons you probably don't see this built as commonly is just due to that. So I'd love to hear about your thoughts about this bar joist. Also, if you have designs that you think would work better, that would be cheaper, stronger, easier to build, longer lasting, 
and all that kind of stuff. I'd love to hear about it. So let's go over the thought process and the variables. So your span, of course, is one of the variables. Um, mine is 10 foot and thinner. And then you have a given amount of weight that you need to carry. And you'll figure that out based on your dead load and live load. Um, so how much your flooring and whatever you're going to put permanently on top of the structure. So rooms and um, cabinetry or all of that stuff. And then what is the pounds per square foot that you're going to want to carry of live load. And so with those variables, you can um, figure out that. And then also you're going to want to know what deflection is you can have in the material. In my case, I wanted very little deflection. And so then you can kind of take a look at um, what, what quantity of metal you're actually going to need to be able to have enough tensile like shear strength. And then you're going to have to figure out, OK, based on some of these details, what shapes can I make that are going to create the stability and rigidity required to serve the purpose. And so in my case, I decided that the two inch width on the top is ideal because it allow it makes it easy to screw down the metal decking. You get much narrower than two inches. It's doable, but it becomes easier to miss your screw points. Um, so that's one of the factors. And of course, the two inches wide adds quite a bit of stability from twisting and a little bit of stability to the structure overall, especially since it's welded down. So deciding on the height of your truss, or a lot of times referred to as the flange width, um, you usually take your span and divide it by 20, which would be six inches. Um, but in my case, I ended up doing seven and a half inches so that potentially could make it just slightly stiffer, um, but also might eat up just slightly more material than it would have to have, just depending how. So another important variable is whatever you're using to join things together, whether that's screws or bolts, or in my case, welding. All of that needs to be held to a high standard and ensure that all of that is done correctly. So why build a bar joist when you can just buy beams? Well, beams tend to be a lot heavier um, for the amount of weight they can carry. And they also can potentially be um, more expensive. But it also has a lot to do with how much labor cost is. Where labor cost is really high, it might be more cost effective to use beams. And where labor costs are a little bit lower, it may be a lot better. Or in multi-story um, buildings where weight is a big criteria, putting in bar joists weighs a lot less than a beam. And so that can mean the overall structure could be lighter. So it really just depends on what you're doing. But I hope you found this video very thought-provoking and interesting. I would love to hear your thoughts and ideas. You guys have a great day, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Remember to like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Bye!